we have made it to the final instalment of our Discovering Deals Week with John Howard. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage as much as I've enjoyed t- talking to John. Well, fun. we always have fun with we you, do. John, and you're so generous with sharing your knowledge. And um, I think, you know, throughout this week, we've learned some of the kind of traits of your secrets of success. Um, and I hope everybody's been making notes because there's been some fantastic little gems dropped along the way. Um, but today, just to close out the week, we're going to be talking about um, kind of finding and discovering deals outside of the box. And this is really Um, outside of the normal channels that we've already discussed like auctions, estate agents etc and and we do hear uh, of you know off market deals and people claiming to have these The infamous off market deal, this is off market John, really? Yeah. So John what what are the kind of ways that you find deals outside of the box? Well it's very interesting, there's lots and lots of ways Vanessa of finding deals um, and um, some are looking for a needle in a haystack, uh, which I think is a bit crazy. And um, as the saying goes, even a blind squirrel finds the odd acorn. But my goodness, it might take you 10 years to do it. Um, then there are more sensible routes to go. So the first route, I would say, and we mentioned it earlier on in the week, is commercial agents. Mm-hmm. Commercial agents have got lots of properties that were residential now commercial that can now go back to residential so get to know all your commercial agents locally they're much more entrepreneurial normally than the estate agent Uh, and um, they're good to work with so and they don't understand residential i've got a great friend who's a commercial agent he rings me up so i've got a great great residential deal for you john i said it's not a great deal i said you know nothing about residential you're commercial stick to what you know (laughs) But of course, because of that, there's an angle. Because what they can't make it work as commercial, you may be able to make as residential. So that's a great angle. So commercial is super. And of course, they don't put their stock normally on all the portals. So no one knows about it half the time. Um, And if they don't get paid, commercial agents, if they get paid doing everything, even the brochure, they don't do it. So they're not like the residential guys and girls who will do everything and get paid at the end. These, These girls and guys, need a fee of something to put it on the market and all the rest of it so they're worth talking to the next lot of people that i would i would certainly work with at the moment are receivers these are people who um where um you've properties gone into liquidation or receivership and uh, these these people are all uh, their accountants that specialize in receiverships and at the end of the day someone's gone bankrupt that property has to be sold and once a receiver squeezes as much money out of it as he can then they'll sell at any price because they need they won't take a property on an administrator or a receiver won't take a property on or or, or business on unless they can get they get they can get paid if there's nothing in it 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 goes to the government how do you how do you get the intros to those people though john um great thing about there's a thing called the world wide web Vanessa (laughs) I've discovered it in the last few years it's very good and get on there get a list of all the receivers in your area you don't need to go the whole country in your area ring them up Mm -hmm. or LinkedIn yeah yeah maybe maybe but I I would just ring them up they're all their names and ring them up and say hi have you got any properties at the moment that you're looking to dispose of which are receiverships Mm -hmm. great way of doing it great way Another thing is um, asset managers. Now, every building society and lending institution, including bridging companies, will tell you, and crowdfunders, oh, we hardly ever repossess anything. What a load of rubbish. They're repossessing every day, and even more so shortly, I'm sure. Get hold of the building societies, for instance. Find out who their asset manager is. They don't like getting their hands dirty themselves. They let someone else do all the dirty work. So they will have what's called an asset manager, manage the property. From the moment it's been repossessed, boarded up, to when it's sold. So you need to find out who the asset managers are, talk to the asset managers. They will probably give you a list of all the properties that need to be sold. And they'll probably with it, they may well be with an agent, and eventually they'll go into an auction if they can't sell them. And they need to sell so many a month for their lending institution, their client. 
And if they don't, guess what happens? They get another one. So that's a great, that's also, a, I think, a great source. A great, great source. Then you've got more basic things. I, someone told me the other day, I just print, he just printed two and a half thousand leaflets and, do, and put them through doors. It's a bit like being a conservative and um, coming, <laughs> having, coming up to the election, that's what we do. But I mean, goodness me, that's hard work. I mean, I'm not saying you won't get the odd deal that way. And I know uh, a friend of mine in Liverpool, he walks the streets and in certain areas, it's going to be more successful than others. And he does very well doing that. So that's another angle. The other thing is you can put a very simple advert in the paper saying properties bought for cash. Now, they're all bought for cash. Someone's putting the money up, aren't they? So, um, you know, immediate decisions. Um, and over the years, that's worked quite well for me in a recession. Um, and now I've got a, 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 someone I mentor, actually. He's very cleverly started a website. Um, and he's... It's creating, you know, we, we buy any property for cash. There's lots of them around now. And he's getting probably 50 leads a month mm -hmm. from that. So, you know, bright young man um, knows what he's doing and he's buying, buying at a discount. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of lots of ways of, of looking and finding deals. Mm -hmm. And you just have to make it happen. As I say, you need to get off your backside and make it happen. And th these are all just kind of thinking laterally, aren't they? Yeah, really. You know, I'm sure others will have a load more than, than me. They might have some that I can take away. Personally, for me, where I've done well um, when I'm in buying mode is I, I go to developers and mm. they've got stock Absolutely. units. Um, uh, and um, yeah. But you're a developer, so you don't want me to say this. No, but no, sometimes no. you might want to sell at a of slight course. discount. Of course we do. On occasions, very, very rarely, of course, Vanessa. But what I would do, if it's a big firm you're looking at and they're PLC, look at when the half year results need yeah. to be out and the year results and go and see them two months beforehand mm -hmm. and say, what have you got? And if they're below their targets, they'll do a deal. They'll do a deal on new build. If you want to buy a new build, the difficulty I think when you build is on the whole, it comes with a premium. Mm -hmm. It's like buying a new car. Mm -hmm. To a point, not always, and you've got to be careful. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's another one. Here we are. We can go on all day with those, can't we? I mean, goodness me, I hope they're all writing them down. <laughs> well, I think also, you know, it goes kind of full circle back to right, the, right at the beginning of the week where we started talking about the importance of relationships. And, you know, when I was building our portfolio uh, between 2004 and 2009, um, I befriended a lot of people in the sales offices. Yes. Um, and... One lady moved, finished, we bought a property at her site, she closed that site out and then a few months later she rang me up and she said, oh I'm working on this really nice site in Walthamstow now yeah. and we've had a sale fall out of bed, it's yeah. a lovely two bedroom, two bathroom flat with the views of the reservoir and the London city skyline, she said it really is nice, you'll love it, come and see it, we can do a deal and that was because I'd nurtured that relationship with her and I just want to reiterate what you said, John, about t treating the salespeople, the estate agents, with respect. Because in a, a few years ago, I did uh, a little bit of work on the other side of the desk, working in a developer's sales yeah. office. I was doing a bit of, you know, freelance work, and. People were absolutely awful to me. They were so rude. And yet these people have knowledge. They move from site to site. So important. You know, whoever you're talking to, make them feel the most important person. Mm. You know, and that goes through life, basically, not just not just when you want to have a, get a deal. Yeah. You know, make people feel special. Make them feel important about themselves. You know, just to stop and say, I remember that, you know, my kids were younger. You know, whether it's the gardener or, or so whoever or Lord, someone we know, treat everyone the same. Good morning, good afternoon. Everyone gets treated the same, and that's how it should be. Um, what, what other ways can people kind of think laterally, John? I think one of the things that we, we touched on, but again worth reiterating, is that if you do start to have a presence on social media, you start talking about the kind of projects you do, the kind of things you're looking for, rather than you going to find people, which isn't a particularly efficient way of doing things, you have people finding you. Yes, I mean, that happens to me more and more now. Um, and um, I'm just starting, you know, my John Howard um, joint venture fund mm -hmm. because of that, because I'm getting a lot of people come to me and want my help and want my, you know, want my money, to be quite blunt about it, <laughs> or my backer's money or some of somebody's money. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, and he, in some cases, I can help them. In other cases, I can't. Mm -hmm. But that's absolutely right. So, you know, 
the more the more I, the more you do on social media clearly i'm learning the more you do the more people know you and the more people come and and see if you see and see if you can help them the other thing we haven't mentioned is property clubs of course because all the clubs around the country i know they've been doing by zoom not 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 physically but it's so much of a networking opportunity mm. there you know mm. none of us can buy every property uh, none of us have got the money or the ability to do that. Nobody has in the whole country, not in the Duke of Westminster. No one has. So, you know, if someone's heard about a property, you can give them a finder's fee. Mm. They'll be happy. I still, I, I earn reasonable money a year out of finder's fees. Mm. You know, where people, I get offered a deal, it doesn't suit me or I, I can't fund it or whatever at the moment, whatever it might be. Um, oh, I know, I know who buys those. I'll speak to them, and then I, I take I get a two percent finder's fee. It's normally two percent, uh, and fortunately I do a few of those here. You know, we all you know none of us are too 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 proud to take a, a decent fee off a deal. So that's what it's about. And you also reward um, people that introduce deals to you, um, and you're, you're you're very generous um, in the commission that you pay, and you want them to make you the number one person that they call when they hear of something absolutely i'm glad you said that so people say to me well why do you get the deals and i don't mm -hmm. well fun enough because i pay a finder's fee and you're too tight or <laughs> or you agree a fee and then you backtrack on it which is awful and wrong you know oh i didn't make as much i'm not going to make as much money i'll give you half and all this business if you've agreed a deal and the fee pay them if you make less that's your problem they've still found you the deal and by the way, I know there's been people um, promoting the fact that with the deal finders, deal sorcerers, oh well, all they have to do, all you have to do is find someone a property and you get paid out. That is not right and you shouldn't be doing it. You need to wait until you've completed that, completed the purchase and then pay them. But there's been some people paying people for introducing them to a property before they've bought it themselves you know, uh, because they've just introduced it. That's mad. Mm. Who would do that in their right mind? But they are. There's a lot of that going on, John, and the whole deal sourcing uh, industry is completely unregulated. Totally. Whereas, you know, when we're talking about professional estate agents, that is a highly yeah, regulated is, area, yes. um, and is, yeah. they are subject to yes. various different government acts that they have to adhere to, like being a member of an ombudsman scheme, um, having, uh, you know, uh, anti-money laundering procedures Absolutely. in place, uh, well. you know, liability insurance. You know, it's 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 a highly regulated area, and I think. I think, again, this is why I, I always think estate agents are, are underrated because they are regulated. They are underrated, Vanessa. And, and I, you know, we own five uh, fine and country offices in Norfolk, so more up market agents. And it costs a lot of money to run an agency. And the saying goes, if you don't sell a property for three months, you're bankrupt. And that's honestly true. You know, it's a tough business to be in. Your overheads don't go down because you're quiet at all. And it's a very expensive business to run mm -hmm. and risky business to run. And the people who run them, I admire them because it isn't easy. The other ones, by the way, while we're thinking, is property management companies oh, yeah. because they get, they get lots of properties come empty. The people decide they want to sell it. Um, you know, if they can sell it direct and get a fee out of it, they'll be delighted to talk to you. So pro yeah. to make sure people know that one as well, property management agents. Yeah. And, and lettings agents yes, as well, same thing, um, same same thing, thing. because yeah. they do have landlords Absolutely. that are selling All up. Time, so yeah. you can go yeah. to a lettings agent yeah. instead of a sales agent. Yeah. Um, we're coming to the end of this wonderful week, John. Um, this friend of mine that I mentioned before, um, who who has these little these little gems of saying, he says, "Always leave something in the deal for somebody else." There's um, nothing sweet in nothing. Right. Same thing, really. Yeah. So nothing sweet in nothing. So always leave something in for the next person. You know, two things. I never worry about what someone's paid for property if I'm buying it off them. Good luck to them if they've made a. Um, a lot of money out of it um, who cares why should I care as long as I know what I can make yeah. that's all that matters leave something in for the next man I've got a reputation for being a, a trader if you like um, a dealer trader so I get people say well, what have you got John I need to buy something quickly you know I keep my men busy what have you got and they say well I've got this okay we'll buy that or whatever they get a discount you know that's what it's about it's about and also keeping your money moving mm. you know it's so hard if you're doing one development and it takes you two years you need to be doing something else in the meantime mm. you need to you know work hard find some deals mm. 
you know, buy and sell them and, and, and or find a JV partner that can do that. So that's what it's about. And one final thing, John, would you, obviously your eyes are open all the, time. all the time. So you might be driving around and you might see something and you think, oh, you know, that, that could work. Would you then go to the land registry and get the owner's address and maybe contact them? How, how would you? Land registry would be another one. Absolutely, if you see a property along the street. I mean, I was, I was watching um, show jumping up in Cheshire uh, mm -hmm. last week and in the high street where my hotel was, um, board up, uh, property for sale, Great, make two big semis. Wasn't was it was an office? I'm on the phone. What what's happening with it? You know, all the time, of course, all the time. You never stop. You're always on it seven days a week, or you should be. Awesome. Well, it's been a brilliant week here on Property Tribes. Thanks to John. And John, as ever, I have to say thank you to to you for your support of Property Tribes. It is the support of our sponsors and advertisers and affiliates that help maintain this site as a free-to-use community resource. So I thank you very much for, for your support of Property Tribes, but also your wonderful contributions you're so generous in sharing your knowledge i always learn so much just being in your company and i guess you know when somebody comes to one of your training days we've only scratched the surface of absolutely. what you actually deliver in your training day absolutely it, we've literally scratched the surface and uh you know it's full of content and there's no there's no fluff mm -hmm. it's from from the moment we start we've got to get on there's a lot to talk about and we're not i mean as someone came to my uh, one i did in norwich recently and said um i think they said well i've just been on a course for the weekend for a few thousand pounds which slightly annoyed me i have to say and mine was on a monday and he was late and he was tired and i said i'm sorry i'm late and i said oh that's no problem um and he stopped me after an hour and he said can i stop you now i said you're okay you're happy with what i'm doing because if not we can you know change it or whatever and he said no john i just want to say i've learned more in an hour than i did in two days uh over the weekend because we were just talking about mindset and f it's all fluff and the reason these people talk about mindset for, for a day and a half mm -hmm. is because they've got no they've got no content they've mm -hmm. done nothing mm -hmm. you know the first thing i would say with any property educator ask them what they've done what or are they still doing it what have they achieved mm -hmm. and if it's not a lot then really what's the point of going to them Absolutely. And I think, you know, you tell it like it is. You're not selling a ticket to see a unicorn that you're going to no. be a multimillionaire in 12 months, starting with no money. That's a completely different type of training. Totally different. John's in a different league. He's got an entry on Wikipedia. Um, and I think, you know, John, I always cite you actually um, to go and look at your accounts on Companies House to show a what a profile Thanks. of a successful developer looks like, because not only do you have individual SPVs for all your yeah. different developments, but you actually have the management companies that yes, then take absolutely. over and manage yeah. them afterwards. You can see very substantial wealth there. And, um, you know, you need to learn from somebody that's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and John is most certainly that. So um, thank you very much for joining me on this week, Discovering Deals with John Howard. We've reached the end of it. I am going to put um, a link to John's training days and do check out his website. Actually, you've got your bookstore yeah. and lots of resources on John's website. And as you can tell from all these interviews and John's contributions to Property Tribes, he's, he's so approachable. He does answer emails. He does pick up his phone um, and he's a wonderful res resource for us all in the property community. So John, don't go changing. I'll, um, I'll try not to. <laughs> I don't think I will at my age, so you're okay. <laughs> well, good luck with everything you're doing. Thank um, you. And John mentioned his uh, JHJVs, John Howard Joint Venture Fund. Um, we're actually going to record a separate interview uh, about that. So if you are interested, um, I can direct you to that as well. Um, but for now, John, um, we're saying thank you. Uh, been a brilliant week so much information shared and um let's do it again sometime let's soon do. be good fun it has been fun and we've been sat in the lovely wine rack as well in the show flat uh, at john's like flagship proper project in ipswich so it's been lovely actually to come here and see how it's come on as yeah, well because last time you're halfway through it and yeah. now we've the, the you know the 150 flats are completed yeah. i've spent all the money and now i'm starting to get it back so that's great yes that's the best bit, best bit <laughs>
<laughs> and we did say actually about heart versus head earlier. And I can tell you, John, I would very happily live in this show flat. Well, you are. It's available. Um, <laughs> we've moved it because we keep selling the show flats, but we've moved it, Vanessa. So uh, if you and Nick are happy, you know, we'll we'll get signed up this afternoon. No problem. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Cheers, John. So I hope you've been enjoying this week. Um, do drop any questions you've got for John underneath the thread. He is a member of Property Tribes and he does contribute. But for now, it's a goodbye from John and myself. And we wish you lots of luck in discovering your deals.